All right, we are back on Morning Line. It's our final segment with uh, Dr. Joshua Beckman. He's the director of uh, vascular medicine over at uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Good to have you on. Always a pleasure, and he's got a good sense of humor. Um, the number, 737-7587. Last segment, we got some folks that waited through the commercial break to talk to you. So let's start things off with uh, James. James, good morning. Good morning now. Um well, I guess we've got too much free water out there, fellas. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding, my friend. I'm glad you're not out there in it. Well, I'm getting ready to fetch my canoe. We might need it over here in Lebanon. So anyway, okay. i got a question for, uh, for everybody there. Um, a doctor has ordered an MRI of my lady friend's uh, heart. Plus, when she lays down, she tells me for a nap or sleep, uh, her legs cramp or she has a restless jumping sensation. What you looking for? The MRI. So the, hmm. that's, a, that's a really good question. So the restless leg thing, pretty common, very annoying. I suggest trying to eat something like a banana before you go to bed. I don't know if your lady friend takes a water pill. Sometimes the movement of electrolytes can do that. But restless legs are really common. Okay. The MRI of the heart and chest, on the other hand, sounds to me like he's trying to figure out, um, he or she's trying to figure out what the pumping function looks like and maybe what the blood vessels around the heart look like. I'm not, I can't link them in my mind. Okay, I was gonna say, so in your mind, not a clear link, but maybe he's looking to see about blood flow and pump or something maybe, along those yeah. lines. Yeah, that's a tough one to know for sure, but I guess you'll find out. Um, let's go next to uh, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Good. Good morning to you. What's on your mind? Well, uh, you know, uh, I lost my wife 16 years ago because of uh, a heart attack and heart problems, and it occurred from diabetes. Mm. And that was uh, now. Now I get back to me. I'm uh, just sent had blood work and stuff sent off to the Boston, Massachusetts, somewhere up there to the Heart Association. And they sent me a pamphlet back with a booklet and stuff telling me I was a borderline heart attack, borderline for stroke, and borderline diabetic. Which so far I keep a check on my blood pressure, I keep a check on my sugar, and I lost one lung back in 1992, so that makes it a little difficult. But, uh, yes, yeah, heart attack problems and stuff is pretty rough, but, you know, I live salt. Mm. And my biggest problem is the salt. When I get too much intake, like say the fluid gets there, my feet swells up, and I get where I can't walk. Sure. And I take uh, cholesterol, which I've been on all kinds of cholesterol medicine. I'm, my cholesterol is probably two to three hundred average, and which is very high. And that's just a uh, next step to having a stroke or a heart attack. So what's um, your question? What's your question then? What can we do for you? Well, this ball, uh, on this, uh, my feet and stuff, a lot of times they'll swell. And uh, like I say, the salt intake, I'm just letting people be aware of the salt. Okay. They can stay away from it. Look, look I, I hear him on that. <laughs> yeah. He's exactly right. Yeah. And he's, he is telling us that what is happening to him can be avoided if you avoid that much salt. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great that he called in. And, I, you know, he has a challenge. And uh -huh. hopefully he's working with his doctor to lower his cholesterol, lower his blood pressure, maybe get on some water, some water pills to get rid of that swelling. Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, salt is Everywhere. flavor. It's flavor. It, yeah. it, it is. And, and I probably overdo salt sometimes to some degree. But I've found that trying to dial it back, you know, find spices, you know, or, or seasonings that maybe don't have salt in them that can give flavor to sometimes more bland food. Because the truth is, uh, oftentimes, any kind of food that you get, you know, like a lot of those diet meals that you buy that are frozen and all this. Tons okay, of salt. They're, they have, yeah, you want to know why? Because there's no fat. The fat and salt are flavor by definition. Ask any chef. Those are the two key things in flavor. If you got no fat and you got no salt, you're eating something that tastes like this piece of paper. All right? So that, it, I, I almost have no comment. It's right? true, yeah. It's true. So you have to find a So, you know, to I will say one other thing. Salt can hide itself. So uh. if you eat out or you eat and you eat processed foods, okay. there's a ton of salt in there that you don't need for you, flavor. You may not even, oh, okay. It's not for flavor anymore. It is for keeping it okay for a longer period of time. Preservative. Oh, if you cook yeah. at home, the salt that's already in your food is much less. Nobody is really worried about a little bit of salt for flavor in cooking. 
Okay. Your processed foods, on the other hand, are chock full. It's like having a salt lick. Excellent point. So processed foods, that's another thing. Stay away from them or in moderation. Um, let's go next to, uh, I believe, uh, was it, I think Steve is next. Neck. Oh, wait, it's not. Uh, who is it on the Oh, wait, it's not. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I took the wrong one there. All right, we'll go to three. Is, I'm sorry. Justin, go ahead, Justin. Hi, good morning. Hey, good morning. Question for you. Sure. I was a runner for 43 years. And in my 31st year of running, I found out that I had a 95% blockage in the OM1. Wow. So I got a stent, and uh, my question is, is well, what do you think uh, about having another arteriogram done uh, sometime in the recent future? Can you um, tell me how you figured out that you had a blockage the first time? I got to where I couldn't run but a quarter of a mile. Wow. And, and I, I knew something was wrong, so... Uh, that's when they found out. So first of all, great job in doing yeah. some, and all this kind of exercise. Impressive. Yeah, yeah really good. And, and then catching it like And that. I would bet that you put off the time that you actually developed the narrowing, the, mm -hmm. the blockage. Now, the good news for you is that you know that if you develop a blockage, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're going to have symptoms when you run. You do not need an arteriogram unless you have symptoms. So unless he notices it again. That's right. How about that? It's crazy that someone, and that, this is instructive too. We talk about folks that eat poorly or don't take care of themselves, but here's a guy who ran for, what do you say, 30 years. It reminds me of the famous author Jim Fix, The That's Art right. of Running. This guy was a runner. He's doing terrific, and he dropped dead of a heart attack. Ten years like, later than everyone else in his family. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. But still, younger, and you would have thought, wow, but it wasn't his family, and it went. But this guy obviously takes care of himself. That's right. How is it that he, is it a genetic thing maybe that this blockage just came about, his body doesn't get rid of cholesterol or something? Yeah, I'm, it's most likely a genetic thing, although he didn't tell us how he eats. Okay. Uh, but my bet, my bet is that, you know, including his good looks and his smarts, yeah. he inherited this from his folks. There you go. Well, good. So keep running, and if you notice something again like before, then go back in. That's right. I that's, gr I, that's great advice, though. Just monitor yourself. That's, that's right. right. And you'll know. Well, he's running. And he knows. Yeah, he'll, he'll find know. out. He'll find out. <clears throat> Let's go to Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Good morning. Are you there, Lisa? Yes, I am. Hey, how can we help you, ma'am? Okay, I'm a 52-year-old black female. Uh, I'm 5'3". I weigh about 170. I'm trying to do better. Uh, my mom died uh, at 64 of a heart attack. She high cholesterol runs in our family. My cholesterol is about 245. It's been like that for a couple of years. I'm afraid to get on statins because of the things I hear about them. Mm. All my sisters on statins. But, and I'm trying to eat better, but... Uh, I have a heart murmur and I'm concerned. What preventative measures can I take or should I go to a, a cardiologist to have them monitor my heart murmur and, because I won't get on statins because I'm trying to uh, lower my cholesterol naturally by changing my diet and maybe exercising. Okay. So the first thing is I want to just say good job at recognizing you have to pay attention. A lot of people don't even pay attention to what's going on, and so I think it's great that you're paying attention. The second thing I'll say is the cholesterol is over here, the murmur is over here, and they're not related. Okay. So if the murmur is a significant murmur and your primary care doctor thinks it needs to be evaluated by a cardiologist, go. Separate from that, with the, your family history and your high cholesterol, I would be on a statin. You would look into a statin? I would I would recommend one based on what you've told me on the phone. All right, let's squeeze in one more if we can. Uh, let's go to Steve. Steve, good morning. Hi, Steve. Yes, sir. How good can morning. we help you? How can we help you, sir? Uh, I'm like a gentleman that called in earlier. My legs got to bother me, so uh, they put in three stents on my left leg mm. and done a endorectomy or something like that up in Nashville. They put a stent in my right leg. And uh, about as of a month ago, Doppler ultrasound still showing blockages. And uh, I was just wondering if that mm. was normal. They've been in my legs five times in the last year cleaning them out. 
Wow. So three, and a stint, by the way, is something that goes in to open up an artery or vein. It sort of looks like a, a chicken wire tube, Oh. but much smaller. And it goes in the vessel, and it's put in there. It sort of looks like one of those old Chinese restaurant umbrellas that you have to yeah. twist open. Yeah. And, and then you twist it open with a balloon, and then it keeps the vessel open. Okay, so he's got three of those in one leg, and he still has problems. Yeah, not, it's not so uncommon. Okay. Uh, and so, number one, yeah, you can have blockages in multiple places in your legs. Number two, we generally try and put the stents in areas where the blockage is the worst, but that doesn't mean we get rid of all the blockages. Mm -hmm. um, and really, at this point, I would only go in and do something if you were still having trouble walking. Again, it's a symptom-driven thing, um, and you only need enough blood flow that you need enough so that you can do what you want to do. Okay. Right. Um, the blockages right. are just there, and by the way, you don't just get blockages in one place. Hmm. It's a total body thing. So if you have it in your legs, you, may have, you have the risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. If you have it in your heart, you have a risk of also having it in your legs. Heart's the most common place. It's the final common pathway. That People who have it in their legs, they're going to die of a heart attack most commonly. Yeah. So that's why even when it's in your legs, you're on the same medicines as the people who have heart disease. Makes sense. Blood pressure control, statins, stop smoking, get your diabetes under control. That's a great point to end on. Dr. Becker, you are awesome. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having Love me. Love to have you on again. You, you can't talk about this enough. I and mean, We could have taken calls probably the rest of the morning, but I know you're a busy guy. So we're going to let you go. But uh, again, hopefully we'll see you again soon. But thank That'd you for great. coming on. It's thank a, you so much. This real, was great. Real pleasure. All right, we'll take a break. Back with a programming note right after this. Thank you.